Teenage granddaughters can be very, very naughty, especially when their dad's just <laughs> Welcome to Smurf P video and today we are looking at Uncanny X-Men issue 13 and on the front we've got a picture of Psyche being knocked out by a wave, maybe it's Banshees, you can only hope, <laughs> sorry no pun intended. So pretty much here is the team, oh, oops I'm not shining now, I love Karma's, you know, the infection on their faces, you know, quite vivid. And then here's a kind of preview, previous, down here, this forever part five, the usual stuff there. And then this is the Tanta team, they give us such a wonderful book, or should I say issue. And Savage Avengers come in, it's pretty cool, Voodoo, which is that Conan? Don't ask me who that is, uh, you got Wolverine at the head of him, already splitting him up. So the first scene is around Dark Beast making a mistake. Clearly Dark Beast has his own agenda and he says to Karma, you look miserable and hey, I could help you. Meanwhile, continuing from the last issue, we have Captain America knocking on the door and Scott's like, Logan, you can stay. And Axe is insistent that he stays. And pretty much uh, Captain America, first of all, he says, you know, you can't keep doing what you're doing. And Scott says, you know what? No offense, but you ain't my captain's son. Laying down the gauntlet. And, you know, I feel like these two should interact more. And I, I always feel like Captain America is a condescending when he comes into these phrase. But this time, he still is. But he's saying, you know, try to be quiet. You can't trust certain people. They're not your friends. And, you know, try and be careful. And... I can't be seen as helping you, but if you need me, I'm here. And while well, Scott keeps it silent and straight to the point, as he always does when it comes to Captain America. Meanwhile, um, Madrox comes in, saying that Hope has made contact, and they head to a rally. Jono almost blows the cover by knocking this bigot out, and Scott's like, calm it down. Meanwhile, quite quickly at the rally, it turns around that the Mutant Liberation Front arrive. Uh, this bit puzzled me when I was reading it. So Scott gets a whack. And then all of a sudden, four arms this side and Scott's still there. It's like, it just seemed a bit off because it looks like he comes from behind him and there's no in-between bit. So Miss Presto is taken out and... The battle kind of starts, as you would expect it to. And Scott's asking for a visual on Banji and Hope. And he's like, Magic, get me up there. Okay, first of all, I dig how Sean is looking. He looks feral. And he looks like, well, he's just come back from the dead. Except in a, you know, skinny, weakened form anyway. The interesting bit is Scott and Hope catching up. And the thing that kind of irritated me, um, since Cable's first death, well, he's probably his third or whatever, in second coming and coming back, him and Hope never got much screen, screen time, you know, much page time together. So it's like they were completely on different tracks, even though Hope was in that computer for a while when Cable and X-Force, you know, it felt like they were always different as well as hope being like she served her purpose in a versus x and that was it and that always bugged me because i felt there was more to that story and they just let it all go to pieces so these two together is quite nice again because they spent some time together after cables whatever death in second coming and basically um hope and scott probably never saw each other much after age versus x so it's quite nice to see this bit and he's like, I know you're hurting stuff. And she's like, you know, we failed him. We all failed him. I also dig in whatever this is going down like a, like she said, a tattoo 
to remember him by. So I thought that was interesting anyway. So get on to it. She's like, hey, you remember I'm a soldier. Cable raised me to be that way, to protect myself and to make decisions and to end wars. So she's like, Banji, go. Psychop intervenes. She pulls a gun on it now. I really dig how this is looking. And she looks like she's going to pull the trigger uh, on him. And you're the guy who came back. So Kid Cable obviously brought Scott back. I don't know if Hope knows that or not. Anyway, this is the bit that probably bugs me the most. Wolverine. Now, I appreciate he's trying to stop Scott from getting a bullet in the thing. But all the times that he talked about hope back then, in, especially in Age vs. X, and I'm reading that currently again, and he always felt like a con Wolverine was a condescending whatever. Um, and in this, he's just... I'll get onto it because I don't want to not show you it and talk about it first. So she gets a shot off even though Wolverine bashes her. And Wolverine goes, you're going to die for that. It's like, what the hell? Okay, maybe she's, what, 18 now? But you're going to die for that for Shin Scott? I, I guess he thinks Scott's dead, I guess, at this point. But it's still not the guy who made a big protest about killing... Innocence now hope may not be truly innocent here, but she's still young enough to be Considered that kind of thought so him Acting this way is absolutely crazy when he couldn't do it when she was about to become Phoenix Etc, and he made this big deal that Cyclops is wrong for putting her in the firing line and hey He's gonna kill her so this bit seems completely out of character for me and re Kind of irritated me for that. So, um, and she's like, hey, thanks, Grandpa, for letting me use powers, because that's what she does. She can use any one powers. And it gets even worse. So she pulls the trigger. Wolverine's all, you know, stabby. It just chucks her, and it's, you know, I just don't get it. It just made no sense to me whatsoever. I did not understand this last little panel. Okay, so this is a... An interesting twist. So Dark Beast saves Cyclops. However, he's lost one eye. And in that famous Age of Apocalypse story, he only had one eye because Wolverine, well, he... Boop, boop, with his claw. Um, anyway, um, I do like seeing Alex with Dark Beast. Um, some of you may remember during the, the Onslaught saga, Dark Beast um, helped... Um, twist Alex into something else or help him find himself or whatever you want to call it but anyway he went a bit bad due to um, Beast's thing uh, there's that grand design coming up um, anyway you know Scott thinks that Dark Beast is going to redeem himself um, however that may not be quite clear Hope is recovering um, I'm not sure why it's taking her so long to recover. It sounds like it's taken quite a while. I mean, in, in Age vs. X, she was pretty much blown up with Wolverine on a plane. And she, she, you know, she grew all that skin back in an instant, just like Wolverine. So it seems a bit weird. Anyway, Alex tells Scott that Dark Beast has been um, experimenting on the New Mutants. Uh, so he goes a bit ape. Um, anyway, Beast says, you know, you should be careful. You've yeah, you shouldn't be firing your beams right now because you could literally blow your head off. So uh, Alex intervenes it with you know grabbing his head and threatening to blow his head off. Anyway, good news is they're all back to normal, and it's you know you got Danny there, so it's really nice kind of you know they're back to normal. And B says you know Warlock divide himself between lots of people, etc. As a compassionate infection. Or whatever anyway so what it meant was that he needed a host to be able to start repairing himself and who's the obvious choice jamie or jamie dupe anyway so there we go and he's like hey kill me to be continued next time so once again we have a a, a quality issue full of um twists shocks and real character driven Characters <laughs> that make no sense whatsoever, um, and I loved it. You know, 
This issue from start to finish was perfect and I'm looking to read in issue 16 next. So thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Facebook. My page is Smurd P. Embrace the geekiness. Goodbye.